Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Motivation for Young Christians. Welcome back, welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of the podcast. Today we're going to be talking about trusting God in your time of why. And right here we have a very special guest, Miss Izema Baptiste. And today, guys, we'll be having um, the discussion on this topic. We'll be led in prayer by Izema, and then we're going to get straight into our questions and our discussion for today with our notes and our biblical So Without further ado, take it over. Okay. Hi, guys. So, guys, close our eyes. <laughs> uh, Lord, to our Father, coming for eternal grace right now. Thank you for the opportunity to share your word with those willing to hear. Oh God, I pray as we go into this discussion that it will bless those who are willing to hear and also those who are affected by this topic and feel like they can learn from this. Oh God, I pray as we go into this discussion that you guide us and guide our words, our thoughts, and our actions in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for that. Great. Now we'll get straight into our very first question. Our very first question is, what is your definition of trusting God in your time of why? Um, trusting God in my time of why simply means trusting his process and the plans that he has for my life, despite I may not know what it is. It just means in those difficult moments, having a lot of faith in him and the designed plan that he has for me. And also someone said that their definition of trusting God in their time of why means praying, trusting, and believing in him, even when they feel like they can't pray. The faith that they have in him anchors them and he always comes through for them on his timing, which is definitely a good perspective to have because God's timing is the timing and it far more perfect than the one that we probably set for him because he doesn't work according to our plan. He works according to his plan and the purpose that he has for our life. Someone said, someone also said, trusting God in their time of why means crying and saying, God, I don't understand, but help me to not lose faith in you. Help me to stand strong on your promises that you'll never leave me nor forsake me and being able to rebuke the negative thoughts that the enemy may try to put in me to doubt myself. It also means blasting worship music on the top of my lungs and just using praise as a weapon and a reminder that God is faithful and has been faithful. I definitely relate to the blasting gospel music because when the things aren't going right in my life or I feel like they're not going on the path that I wanted to, I blast my gospel music to just like block out the world and just spend time in God's presence and being able to just share those moments with him. Um, definitely. Um, my definition of trusting God during time of why is that when you're going through either like trials or tribulations, just a moment where you're confused and why something's going on, it's not losing track of what God has done, not losing track of who he is. Because And oftentimes during those times, God has been so good to us, done a whole bunch of things to us. And then we're in that moment, we completely forget that this is the God that brought me through this. This is the God that brought me through that. This is a God that has never failed me. So it's keeping um faith and just continue to work because it's very hard to keep faith during that time and trust god but just saying despite how i feel god i'm trusting you just let me lead and i will follow um and then from the two responses that i received uh, that in short i would say it means intentionally holding onto god's promise his words in the times when nothing else makes sense it's having faith admits disappointment, fear, etc. God is God even in moments when it seems he is not hearing my prayers. I may never get answer, I may never get my answer to why, but I'm determined to seek the Lord, worship and serve him in spite of it. I decide to trust him, his decide to trust him um, above my own. And this is just, this is a, a very good like response because in those times we may be very confused, but Regardless of your confusion, regardless of the question and everything, just continue to put your faith in him because it will work out you know, work out for your best. It's hard to trust God in my time of why, especially when the human mind wants things their own way. And it becomes difficult to see the plan of Christ. We become, we have become a society of instant gratification. So when it comes to waiting for something that we believe we deserve immediately because we have been obedient for a season when God wants us, God's want um, full-time commitment. So trusting God in a time of why means keeping means daily keeping our thoughts in check, especially when we believe a situation comes to look better than heading down the path of Christ. And then in Romans chapter 8, verses 28, it says that 
And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love him and call him according to his purpose for them. And this is very true. During your time where you're questioning why is this happening, just know that everything that God allows us to go through, it works together for the best of us and um, our yeah, work. In um, I also have a Bible verse that I've, it's constantly been a reminder in my life. It's Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. If you've ever followed me on Instagram, you know that I post this verse a lot. And it says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not onto thine own understandings in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct thy path. One of the reasons why I constantly go back to this scripture is because it talks about not leaning on thine own understandings because it's deceiving. And because when we follow the desire of the heart, it can be misleading. It can cause us to think that something that we want is what God wants for us when in reality it's just us leaning on the desires of our heart and not exactly following God and also it talks about acknowledging God in all our ways and in times of why and questions and doubt we have to acknowledge God because acknowledging him shows that we're like fully dependent on him his word his path his hand in our life even though the situation may be difficult or it may seem like something that we can't overcome but acknowledging him and trusting him allows him to direct our path in the way that he wants it to be and just like the structure of our life and we know why or like what does that statement mean for us but then we also got to cover the aspect of why is it hard to trust god during a time of why and we're gonna get straight into this question Vayna, take it away. so um it's hard to trust god in our time of why because of our desires like our fleshly desires of our impatience um just being stubborn in general because trusting god it means you have to wait and if you have if you're like very eager or you're someone that has the tendency to just want everything to happen in that moment trusting God seems like the biggest obstacle that you can overcome when in reality it's just trusting his process it can be five months two years three years you know constantly trusting God is something hard it's definitely a challenge it's definitely just something that's hard to overcome so it's hard to trust God in our time of why, because it's easier to not trust God. It's easier to like trust our instinct, trust ourselves, trust our desires, trust what we want, because we feel like we know what's best for ourselves, especially because you know it's like our mind, we control this or whatever. But God is the person that created us. He's the person that literally knew us before we were even like conceived in the womb. He knew our purpose and our plan. So because we have this fear of things not coming out the way that we wanted, trusting God seems like the hardest thing to ever yet to do. And that that's a very true statement. The reason why it's so hard because I'd say especially like during a hurtful, like painful time, um, it's hard because it's so yeah, especially during like hurtful, painful time, it's hard because you, your mind is so focused on what is currently going on and that pain it completely distracts you from from um what god have done and during your time of distraction that's when the devils just start putting all them thoughts into your head and then you just get deeper and deeper of being distracted and then it becomes and then once you at that point it becomes so hard to okay i know i know this is god i know he's done all of this thing for me it becomes so hard to do that and just put that feet in there because it's like God, I'm I'm in pain right now. Like you're not what you doing. You're not doing nothing. I'm over here crying about about this situation. I'm heartbroken, but I don't see you doing nothing. And that's another thing. We we as humans like God to operate in our time, which is a problem. God operates on His own time. He does not operate in our time. And as a result of us wanting that now, now, now thing, when it don't come true, we just say, you know what? Forget him. Forget him. I'm gonna do my own thing. And just that that that's not trust and just lead us into like 
It just leads into like a bad path. Yeah, not trusting God. Okay, for like myself, there have been so many situations in my life where I have not exactly been trusting God and the outcome, terrible, instant regret, um, a lot of emotions, a lot of pain, a lot of heartache. And a lot of times after that happens, I step back and I'm like, God, you showed me signs. I could have trusted you through this, but I didn't. And because of that, I am crying. I'm in heart. Like I have a lot of pain. I'm just like really struggling and suffering. And that's where it's like trusting God can not, not put you in a bubble, but it can protect you from so much that not trusting him causes a lot of pain that could have been avoided if we had just trusted him. That's, that's definitely true. Get into like a quick story time. Right, so last year, trusting God was a very hard thing for me due to everything that I went through um, with the constant debt that occurred. It, it was hard to trust God because it's like, why God, why does this keep happening? I thought you was, I thought you was gonna give me a break this year. You ain't gave me a break. You see, I was good for January, February, March, but as soon as April came, everything went south. So um, as I'm just dealing with the things that happened a month before, you had current things that was going on those months too, and it became hard to trust God because it's like, God, I trusted you in April, and then something happened in May. Then July, something happened. Then August and September, October, November, December, stuff just kept, kept just happening. And my mentor then was just telling me that this is gonna be a, is it gonna be a season? It won't last forever. I'm like, um, it's been going on for eight months. What you mean it won't last forever? It been feel like it been going on forever. And I, I, I just, I didn't trust God too much in that point because I felt like, God, what, what, why, why me? Like, why, why, why this keep happening to me? Like I've been, I've been a way better person in life lately. Like, like why it's me? And I was focusing more on the hurt and the pain I was feeling, and it distracted me from the overall goal, the main point that this is a guy that brought me through everything, every single thing I've been through in my life. This is the same God that um has brought me through, and I'm still in that process of of just trusting God more because now everything kind of you know calmed down you have still a little stuff going here and there but everything calmed down to a point where i'm not too focused on the hurt the pain now i'm focused on trusting that guy and um letting him heal me and not focusing on him during that time actually hurt me um the most because during that time instead of drawing closer to god and his word um i was going far away i said no nah, i'm not about to i'm i'm not about to read no bible i'm not praying because you tell me you want me to pray the man that's causing all these things in my life right now i'm not praying to him i'm i i'm like i'm not attending no church online i'm not reading no bible i'm gonna do me and that's exactly when i began myself and some best <laughs> doing me <laughs> so i agree with that statement that you made you put yourself in more trouble by not aligning yourself with God. Not yeah, and um, going back to one of the responses that you got, they talked about us thinking, you had also said that you have been like a good person this year, whatever, because we feel like we have like been, we have done, we have not sinned. We've just like been good Christians, good quote and quote Christians, you know, reflective of God and everything. We may feel like, oh, because of that, we do not, we do not need to go through hard times we do not need or we do not deserve trials and tribulations but god never said oh when you trust me everything that's happened to you is going to stop um he never said oh because you trust me you're not going to experience heartache and pain and suffering he never said that he asks us to trust him through those moments he asks us to put faith in him and i think i have a i have a verse um okay uh so like in moments of where we're like fighting and wrestling with trials and tribulations psalms 46 10 says stop your fighting and know that i am god exalted on the nations exalted on the earth and 
trusting God desires, I mean, requires us to stand still. Like it, it really calls for a moment of just being still and stopping, stop questioning, stop wondering, stop doubting, and just be still and be patient on him and his timing and his purpose and plan. And I feel like I, for me personally, I relate to that feeling of, oh, I have not done anything wrong or to myself i mean so why is this happening to me but it just goes back to god never told us that we're not going to experience pain he never told us that we're not going to experience trials and that's where we need to get out of like that mindset of oh i've been good so bad things shouldn't be happening to me um definitely and just during those time yeah yeah just well for me i was very scared because the way everything was going i was scared for the next month because as the month go by, it was just getting worse and worse. I said, I am scared. But this is exactly where Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10 comes in. It says, don't be afraid, for I am with you. Do not be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold, up, I will, I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. And this is a scripture I was just trying to just always keep in my head that hold on to God let him be my strength let him be my everything because I, I was scared I, I was very much scared for um the next month because I'm like I don't know who, who who's going to die next I don't know what other bad news is going to come my way I was scared but instead of being scared I should have listened to Proverbs chapter 16 verse 9 that says we can make our plans but God determined our steps. And this scripture relates to that because I was basically trying to plan out how I'm going to handle whatever comes at me. And instead of me trying to plan that out, I should have just let, put it in God's hands, let God um, determine my steps. Because God would have been like, okay, we're going to go into this month with a positive mindset. Um, I'm, you know, I might have some coming your way. Um, if it do come your way, come straight back to me um, pray to me about it. Um, get into your word. Talk to the people that you have around you. God would have gave me the own step, but I was over here like, nah, I'm trying to do my own thing. Yeah, that, that didn't work out too well. Okay, so I just thought of something. So God actually has given us the tools to fight certain things. The Bible, scripture, like he has put it there where it's like, it's right in front of us, but it's will it's up to us. So instead of like overthinking and worrying and doubting, get into the word, pray fast. Um, if you have like mentors and people that are strong in their faith, like you, that you can go to, to talk to, to like the tools. But sometimes I feel like it's hard to go to those tools because we're so caught up in our emotions. We're so caught up in what is happening and the situation that our first reaction may just be oh god didn't love me god if god did love me he would have never put me through this if what god doing like we doubting god that's the first thing like questioning him and doubting him when our first reaction should just be like getting into the word talking to him and really just praying to him about the situation rather than questioning him and i guess being angry with him because i'm i have been angry with God well not necessarily like full-blown wanting to fight him type but I just mean like angry where it's like God how can this possibly be happening why is this happening to me I don't understand but then his purpose and his plan for us is greater than what we see it's greater than what our eyes can see and I'm pretty sure if he was to reveal certain things to us we'd be like how is this going to come out of this how is how is this fight going to bring this resolution? It's like, it doesn't make sense. But then it's like, we would never understand his plan. And that's why God doesn't give us everything, like all of the answers, because we he knows we're going to doubt him even further. Like, there's a story in the Bible. I do not remember, but I think it's... <sighs> never mind. I kind of remember. It's like on the tip of my tongue, but I just don't. I don't remember. I don't remember it exactly. But 
yeah it's the fight and then the result but we just kind of have to just trust god like his word says trust in him i feel i want to fight god um i'm not gonna lie i was mad like i, I was i was really i was like god let's do a one-on-one because the way thing is going right now me and you got beef right now um because it was like it got so annoying by how much stuff like how much stuff just kept happening because it got to a point where as soon I was in a good mindset, or I felt like I was good, bam, the next thing came. And then once I'm recovering from that, the next thing came, I was like, so what are we doing over here? Um, so like every time I'm good, I'm in a good mindset, you're going to send something my way. Like I was honestly mad. And instead of going to my Bible, instead of going to my friends, my mentors, I was like, I'm not going to none of them because they're about to tell me something I do not want to hear. The same thing that you would tell me, I know they would try to tell me that, and I was not trying to hear none of that. So I purposely did not want to nobody because I because I'm like, I know I know what the response they're gonna give me, and that's exactly what I do not want to hear. And in time like that, that could be very problematic for you because I knew they was gonna give me good advice, good things, um, good wisdom, but. I wasn't going for it. I was just so wrapped around that feeling. And then eventually I was like, yeah, uh, I got to go with them. And even when I went to them, I was still like, I ain't trying to hit that. I ain't trying to hit that. But then I was, I was a little bit more like open to hearing it. And then eventually um, I really took it. I'll give you a good example. Um, this the sermon that I did um on why trials and tribulation is important. When I wrote that sermon, I didn't write it in the mindset of what I was going through. Um, that I wrote that at the end of May, and I, I did that in June. I didn't write it in the mindset of what I was going through at that point, because at that point, the two two deaths occurred. Um, at that point, um, and then the rest came later on. So I wasn't writing based on that. I was actually writing based on my bullying situation, how that affected me, how that led to YouTube, da 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 da. Um, but after I did it, my mentor said to me, he was like, "You know that relates to um what you're going through right now, right?" I said, "How?" Oh. And then he explained it. I was like, I'm "Not trying to hear that." But then I was like, "Oh yeah," because literally I went back and I read everything that I wrote and i'm like this is literally exactly the same thing in a moment like that where um god 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 works very funny because i feel like god purposely let me write all of that not only to bless the audience that crowd that day but then also knowing that that was going to help me later on i was like you see how god works i remember i was telling him i was like you see how god works because even during your time where you're not trusting during your time god is going to send you something and, this, and that sermon is what God sent to me to explain why this season you're going through right now is important. You may be hurt. You may be crying. Because, hey, I ain't never cried as much as I ever cried last year. I was all over the place. But um, despite that, God was just still telling me, okay, this is important for you to go through. I'm still going to be here. Still going to be faithful. But. I wasn't trying to hear none of that. But, you know, eventually I got out of that mindset and I was like, you know what? You're right. I'm no longer going to fight you. Okay. So going off of like stories of where you did not trust God, for me, this year I moved to a new school and I am very introverted unless I know you pretty well or I'm very comfortable with you. If you're, if we're not, I'm as quiet as can be. You will not hear me talk or anything like that. And I was crying a lot because I was in, I'm a senior in high school, no friends at a new school. It was really putting a toll on my mental health. And I made a friend, but I didn't go to God about this friendship. I really just went off of, oh, I just want to make a friend. I don't want to be bored. And I was just trying to like build a friendship without first consulting the maker, without first consulting the person that I need to go to. So the friendship did not end well. It was pretty detrimental and not detrimental in the sense of, oh, it's like that bad. But 
for both of us, it wasn't good. It wasn't a good friendship. And I feel like those things could have been avoided if I first went to God. Like, God, is this friendship? Well, actually, I did go to God. But the thing is, he sent me signs and I ignored them. (laughs) I ignored every single one of them. Mainly because that's not what I wanted. I wanted what I wanted. And God was telling me, no. But I wanted it to be, yes. And being very stubborn, I stayed. And then after the friendship ended, I was like, God, if I had listened to you, this could have been avoided. But I have I think it helped me in the sense that I learned a lot about myself, as in what I need to change and what I need to improve on. So even though it was a bad situation, it was helpful. But this is all to say, trust God in the beginning, because he sends you signs. He sends you warnings. He even can send you people around you to just tell you, listen, maybe this isn't for you, but take away your stubbornness and listen to God because he can protect you from so much, like so much crying and just like, just trust God. That's the moral of the story. Trust God. I definitely know what you mean. Hey, trust, not trusting God have put me in some heat. It really it, re- it really have because I'm one of them people I'm I'm try- I'm working on this. I'm a very vocal person, <laughs> which is both a good and a bad thing. Because sometimes if I'm irritated or I'm angry, I'ma let it out on whoever is in my atmosphere. Um and just first okay, I'll give you an example. Um in June. When I was down in Guyana for my grandmother's funeral, um, at this point, my grandmother and my neighbor passed. So I was still in the grieving process of both that. I completely ignore what what I was, what, what feelings I was feeling at that point. So I'm like, I'm not about to, I'm not about to do all that. Like even at my grandmother's funeral, I did not cry that whole day. So I'm like, I ain't about to let these people cry. I ain't cry. I ain't about to let none of these people see me cry. Cause I know I let one of them people see me cry. Oh, they're not going to let me go on that one. They are not going to let me go. So I was like, you know what? I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to do it. I remember one of my friends, I called her before the funeral because I know like she'll come for me. We'll just joke a little bit. Just kind of like cheer me up before going to um, that funeral. So I called her. I was talking with her um, and whatever. And then you know, I had to get off the phone and head straight to the funeral. So went to the funeral, did um, that whole thing. Now, I'm at home. So I called her. Now I'm expecting her to answer because I'm like, now I wanna, I kind of wanna vent, just sing out my emotion. She ain't answer. I call her the Tuesday, cause that was the Monday when it happened. Tuesday she ain't answer. Call her the Wednesday, she didn't answer. I call her the Friday and the Thursday, she ain't answer. So the Friday when I called her and she answered, I was like, you know, I called you Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. I mean, not Friday. But Thursday, and you didn't answer, right? And then she was like, I'm giving you, um, I was just giving you time to read because I know what occurred, da, 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 da. I was like, who asked you for that? I never asked for that. I was like, I was like, <laughs> don't do all that. <laughs> don't do all that. I was like, I didn't ask for that. I was like, you know, I literally called you right before I went to that funeral. You think I needed some space? If I needed some space, I wouldn't have called you. So I literally was just getting real heated and whatever. And then she, I don't remember what she said after that, but I completely just hanged the phone up. And that was one of the moments where I was like, you see, if I would have trusted God and I would have, if I would have trusted God um, and just go to him and was properly handled my feelings, I could have prevented that. But as me not trusting God and me just trying to bottle up all my emotion, I eventually pour that out on somebody. And I love my friend so much. Thank God for her. Because she understands. So later when I apologize, she was good. Because she one of them people, she not really one of them people you want to go off on. That not really going to end well with you. But, you know, she kind of let me slide. But one of, that's one of the moments where I was like, I really could have avoided that. I really could have avoided Wait, that. Wait, I'm sorry. I did not hear what you said. Could you repeat the last part? <clears throat> oh, I was saying that was one moment that I was saying I could have avoided that. If I was properly just going straight to God, trusting him um, and what I was doing and um, trusting what was going on 
and just probably just um go to him about my feelings. Cause that's that's one thing. Like we don't realize that we can go to God about anything. Anything you can go to God about. And often I forget that. So during that time, well, not only I forget I purposely did not want to go to God, but then also just sometimes I'd be forgetting I could go to God about stuff like that. And I didn't. So that um resulted in um uh, that, but that that was something that could have been avoided. It really easily could have been over. Okay, so we answered why is it hard to trust God and our way of trusting God. So now, how has trusting God protected you? Or like not, yeah, like how has trusting God protected you from just any bad thing that, well, like in a situation, right? you instead of questioning god like you normally would how has trusting god protected you from the bad outcome of that situation or even just changed like your perspective on a situation because i know like as we said already it's pretty hard to not trust god it's pretty hard to question god and have a lot of why moments but when those why moments do not occur and you actually do trust god how has that benefited you it does help me a lot i remember this one time i think you know i was coming from school somewhere and that guy was just telling me, it was something that was going on, but God told me, I don't go home. Just go straight home. Don't worry about that situation. And I remember I went straight home and then something, I got news about something that occurred um, based on that thing I was about, that situation I was about to like put my eye into. And that was one of the most like, you see, you see we're listening to God and just trusting what he's saying helped you out. And even if I was there, nothing would have occurred, like happened to me. Well, I don't know for sure, but um, me just not just not being in that thing really helped me a lot because I didn't know either if I could have been hurt in that thing or whatever. So I would say that is one of um one of the situations. And there's other situations too, like um a, a trusting God during like those times have helped me to avoid danger, um, avoid hurt avoid pain um and other stuff like that especially like with people too like if um there's somebody around you that want to get close to you and that guy is saying uh-uh, mm, 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 mm. uh not not that person um and then i'll listen and then seeing um how me not being around that person that benefit me it's been it's been so much situation but that particular first situation is one of those situations where like i was like Hey, you see what listening God be doing? How, how about you? Um, so for me, I think it has helped me a lot in the sense that I protect my myself from a lot of negative things. Uh, most times, most of my stories revolve around like friendships and just yeah. So trusting God. Actually trusting him in situations have caused me not to be overthink or become negatively affected by a situation. And one of the things that, so I'll go to school. So like I'll give an example with school. So like I said, I started a new school this year and I was taking AP biology. So at that time, I was one of the few kids that looked like me. I was the only kid that looked like me in that class. And I was surrounded by people that looked at me weird and just like treated me weird. And I knew that mentally I was not going to deal with it. And despite people around me telling me, oh, stay in the class, stick through it. I just went with, you know, the feeling that I had and the, the, the guidance that I was being given in my head, like, listen, this is not for you, just leave. And I left. And it has been pretty good because mentally I am not drained from that situation like I was when I was in it because when I was in that class I was crying because I wasn't sure what was happening why it was happening so leaving that situation has caused me to just have one less thing to stress about and I'm glad that I trusted God with that because I'm just not being stressed through like my last year of high school just not crying about a class and just be feeling like a sore thumb being stuck out in a class so I guess trusting God has helped me to not be stressed, overwhelmed, sad, depressed, and just anything that is like S sounds terrible. I feel like I've also helped me um, with YouTube. 
Um, because with me being on here for like six years, it's been time where I was like, is it still worth it just doing this, creating videos? Like, is it like worth it anymore? And then God would just be like, yes, it is. It is worth it. Let's keep going. Let's create, let's keep creating those videos. And during those time, I trusted God and I kept going. And that became a blessing because through like, especially like with this year and last year, well, especially with 2020 and 2021, because I keep forgetting that this video is coming out in 2022. Especially with 2020 and 2021, I gained relationship with so many people, awesome people. Like our lovely guest here right now, that was one of the people that I I gained a relationship through me doing YouTube. Like there's so many people that I gained relationship just through doing this. And um, I think about, imagine if I would have, because um, I think, is this around like eight, nine graders around the time where I was about to, I was about to completely quit. So I'm like, imagine if I would have stopped making videos in that year. Um, I, a lot of people I would just not have relationships with. Perfect example, Ivema, me and her would not know each other. We will still have a common person that we know. Shout out to Fianna. Um, we'll still have a common person that we know, but me and her would have no clue of who each other is. A um, couple of other people that I've met. Um, and then opportunity too, because let me tell you now, being a YouTuber have provided me with so many opportunities, especially school related, that have not would have been provided if I was not doing YouTube. So that was one of the biggest things that occurred in my life where um, I was like, you know what? I'm going to listen to you, God. I don't really see how this is going to work out, but you know how it's going to work out. So that is one of the moments that really helped me um, because from the whole bunch of videos I've made to pouring into people, to me learning too, because it's not just um, other, others is learning through my video. I'm learning myself. Like when I do sit downs with people from different professions, I'm there to be a student. Um, I'm not there to be a teacher or try to teach. I'm here to be a student. Just like how everybody's watching, I'm like, I'm learning too. I'm like, oh, so you're telling me that comprehension is the key and um, communication is the block? Because honestly, I learned that through a video. So I'll give you a quick story. I was doing this video with um, a therapist. Shout out to Sister Dana. And um, um, she was saying something and then she was saying something related to that topic. And then I said that point. And then she paused me because it was very important because often we think communication is key. It's not really key. Like communication um, is good, but if somebody don't comprehend what you're saying, the communication becomes useless. So I think either communication is key and comprehension is a lot. I'm probably switching it later, but either way, comprehension is more important than the communication because you can communicate, but if the person don't comprehend what you're saying, it doesn't like matter. So that's an amazing thing that came out of me doing that video with her. So, hey, just trusting God with this YouTube thing, really helpful, because I gained an amazing friendship with my dearly friend right here. Uh, yeah. So I feel like this platform, I it's definitely good because I looked at your videos like going through and I just saw like some of the topics that you have. And even though you don't have a major platform, like one of those popular YouTubers, the people that see your videos, I'm sure that they're blessed by it simply because you continue to be persistent and you continue to trust God. Because I'm sure sometimes you probably doubt, oh, maybe like, why has my video got so much views or like, why hasn't it reached so many people? But the few people that see it, maybe they need it more than the persons that don't see it. And I just feel like it's amazing to like have this platform simply just to share God's word because I am one of those people that go on YouTube and search up Christian YouTubers <laughs> like I I can admit to this because I was doing it literally recently trying to find people that I can learn from and just see how much they've progressed like in their relationship with God because for me I too struggle and I still want to like do better you know not in the aspect of like YouTube but mainly just like sharing God's word so seeing Ezra do this it's encouraging and it's like uplifting because you know sooner or later he's gonna like touch more people, <laughs> touch more people's lives and just like grow spiritually emotionally physically and like as a person in God's kingdom you're about to make me blush you're about to make me blush but 
I, I I've saw re- you watching. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I very much, I very much appreciate that. Like, um, when people like compliment me and the stuff that I do, I appreciate. I don't do it for the compliments. I'm doing God work. As long as God compliment me, what I'm doing, I'm good. Um, but when people tell me it, like, it really melts my heart because during those times where you question why should I still be doing this? Should I still be doing this? And then you hear the comments from people are really just like, okay, okay, what I'm doing is working. And um, my mentor, Javid, he always tell me anytime people compliment you on God work, they say to God be the glory. That way you're still acknowledging God for the work that he done. Because I remember I used to be like, thank you, thank you. But then he just tell me like, say to God be the glory. Because that way you're still giving God the glory, giving him the honor. Because at the end of the day, Hey, this is God, really, because God is the one that brought the idea to even do YouTube. (laughs) That wasn't an idea that I had. God popped the idea in my head, and I went straight to it. And everything I do is surrounding him. So um, I make sure that um, I give him his credit at all times. So to my comment for that is to God be the glory. But then also, you got me blessed. (laughs) Uh, don't tell me you're crying. No, I'm just laughing. Nah, because you like, uh, like. Oh no, I'm actually like. Eyes. You got that naked boy. <laughs> uh, you got anything else? Because I got a couple more scriptures that I can mention. Uh, let me see. I do have scriptures. But, oh, yeah, I have a scripture. All right. So continuing in, like, the conversation, um, Hebrews 11.1 1 is also another Bible verse that I know by heart. And it says, now faith is the reality of all things hoped for, but the proof of what is not seen. And I feel like faith and trusting God goes hand to hand, or, like, they're both words that have the same amount of meaning because if you you could have faith yes but you also have to trust god to make things happen but also like having faith in god is pivotal because you have faith in his perfect plan and have faith in his perfect timing so like in moments of why for me i try to have faith that maybe somehow things are going to change but then on the at the same time, sometimes there's a question mark. Maybe it'll change. Just maybe. But then when bringing faith into that, it's like it will change. Because you have faith in God and his plan and his time. And another scripture. Uh, okay. Okay. Another scripture that I also know is Romans 8, 31, that says, what then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? And in going back to like trials and tribulations, if God is for us, what, what can that trial do that will cause you to be knocked down off of your feet? If God is for us, those moments of crying, those nights that you cried, when you look back at that in a couple of years, you're going to realize that, wow maybe i cried for nothing i could have just like in those moments continue trusting god but i know sometimes crying is like the best medicine or it's like the best answer but in those moments it's like cry and cry to god cry and trust god cry and just have faith that he is like working in the midst plus god knows our here our tears like he knows our cries he knows our tears he knows our um I mean, is it, is it cries? He knows our cries. He knows the cries of our heart or the desires of our heart. So it's like, he already knows. He knows that you're going to cry tomorrow. Don't you think he knows that? He knows that you cried a couple of days from now. He knows it, but it's like, are you going to trust him? He knows these things, but he, what are you going to do in those moments? Are you going to trust him? Or are you just going to allow the tears to just become the main point of focus i feel like you was trying to talk to me but i was like oh she just using the scenario um <laughs> but um go back at the faith thing uh in first corinthians chapter 13 verse 7 it says love it says love never gives up never lose faith and is always hopeful and endure every um circumstance and this is very important because 
And during those times, just remember your love for God. Because your love for God would, would be so good. Well, and you'll grow to the same point to where you just never never give up. You'll never lose that faith just knowing um how good God is. And um just remember to always be hopeful and just know that um you can endure any circumstance because you know the Heavenly Father is with you. And also, God never allows us to go through something we can't handle. If God know we can't handle it, he does not give it to us. That's why sometimes when we pray for certain stuff, God don't give it to us at that moment because you can't handle that. Uh, once you grow up, see, once you get a little bit like 23, some, some around that age, I'm going to give that to you because you're going to be um like at that age to um, handle it. So anything that you go through, the Heavenly Father um knows, the Heavenly Father um purposely that you go through because he knows it's something that you can handle. It. You can't handle it on your own, but you can handle it through the Heavenly Father. And in Ephesians chapter 13, verse 17, it says that then... Jesus Christ will make his home in your heart as you trust him. Your roots will grow down and in, into God's love and keep you strong. So just don't forget to keep your trust in God. Just keep your trust in God because your trust in him is one going to keep you strong in your time of weakness. Those moments where you're confused um, on why is this happening, your trust in God is going to keep you strong. God, I don't know why these people keep dying. But I trust in you. We're going to be all right. As long as we're going to be all right. If we got to cry, we're going to cry. But we going to be all right. I know I keep pointing at you, but I'm pointing at me on my screen. We're going to be all right. Um, and um, my last scripture in Proverbs chapter 15, verses 15, it says, um, for the disappointment, every day brings trouble um, for the happy art. Life is a continuous act. So every single day brings a new trouble, new trial, new tribulation. There's always something that's going to be going on. And guess what? He's the same God yesterday, the same God today, the same God tomorrow, the same God next week, next month, next year, next five years, three years, four years, five years, ten years. He's the same God. So, so as those new challenges pop up, guess what? You got the same God that's going to help you out. Can I get an amen? Amen. I'm about to say your mic here. <laughs> He's the same God. I I just I'll just finish all my scriptures. <laughs> yeah, I just I literally just finish all my scriptures. You said you finish your scriptures? Yeah, I just finished all my scriptures. I am scripture less at this point. Yeah, um, I finished mine too, but I think you were saying a scripture that I know, but I don't, I know it, but I don't remember it. the entire thing. Okay. You're talking about the one from Proverbs, if you know the one from, um, uh, hold on. I think it's Matthew. Um, no, I, Alpha. I didn't say no Matthew. I didn't say no Matthew, Christian. Uh, I got you. Okay, so Machu. So I have another scripture. Mm-hmm. So it's Machu six thirty four. It says, "Take therefore no thought for the tomorrow." For okay, so it, this version says, "Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof." But it mainly says, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will have like worries of its own. And something that I'm working on is not worrying about tomorrow because a lot of times I'm like, what? Tell what? But this is supposed to happen tomorrow? Or like, this person said this thing will happen tomorrow. I supposed to. And it's like, when you're an overthinker, and it doesn't even have to mean figure like figuratively being tomorrow. It can mean in a couple of hours. If you tell me, if you text me and be like, oh, I have to talk to you. And I'm like, okay, I'm here. But then you're like, nah, no, I'll talk to you later. Later? Later? <laughs> Please talk to me now. What you, what, you, what you mean later? Later? Exactly. I could talk to you now, ter. Not later. I could talk to you now, er. 
yes like in this moment please come back come come back let's talk about this now but then it's like that's what god is telling us do not worry about tomorrow which my will have worries of its own don't worry about that situation don't worry about how I know this is like pastors say this. I've remembered this from like church. Pastor Dick, don't worry about how you get food on your table. Don't worry about how you get gas in your car. Don't worry about those things because God is in control. It's like He doesn't want us to worry. His scripture, I'm telling you, everything we need to fight warfare or like to live life is in the Bible. Literally, it's all connecting because it's like literally right here my true 634 do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will have worries of its own right there telling you not to worry so remember that don't worry about tomorrow not worry about tomorrow it may be hard during your time of why you're worrying about this you're worrying about that you're not trusting god but what you need to do is be like i give up I surrender. God take over. Don't forget, I give up. I surrender. God take over. Those are the three steps that you gotta do. Give up, surrender, and then the God take over. I'm telling you, you know how you know how much that's gonna bless your life. Give up, surrender, and let God take over. You know how much, like you really know how much blessing gonna happen in your life if you give up, surrender, and let God take over. You do hear the rhyme. You hear the rhyme, right? Yeah, that's what I keep repeating. Give up. up. <laughs> surrender. You know what? I'm that's gonna be my slogan from now on. Give up, surrender, let God take over. If you have not learned anything from this episode, this video. give up, surrender, God take, let God take over. <laughs> let, 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 let the most high do his work. You know what? I'm gonna put that in the snippet for the video. I'm gonna make sure I put that in the snippet. But give up, surrender, let him take over. Don't be worried. Put your worries on him. Because God said, cast your worries on me. I do not know what scripture that is outside of my head. If you can, can you please pull it up? But um God tell us to put our worries on him. Like our sadness, how we were feeling, put that on in him. God, God is the only person in this world that would tell you to put everything on him. I wouldn't do that. Um, my life is busy and stressful by itself. I don't need you to put nothing on me. But God, you get, you got it? Yeah, I got the scripture. First Peter 5, 7. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Amen. Said all. 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 Not, not one bit, not one for it, not half, not 50%, not 99%. He need 100%. Percent at 99.5, 99.99, he need a hundred percent. Cast everything on him because the Heavenly Father will be there for you. And this was such an amazing conversation, Ivema. Let's talk about trusting God in your time away. Um, trust me, everybody. We know out there is we know it's hard. We have been through it ourselves. We know it's not an easy thing. But like I said, give up, surrender, put your trust in God. Put your trust in God, right? God, give up, surrender, let God take over. Oh, yeah. So don't forget, give up, surrender, let God take over. Just during those times, just do that. Give up, surrender, let God take over. Do you, do you have anything else? No, I don't think so. I think the three steps, <laughs> they are very elaborate. Give up, surrender, let God take over. Amen. I'm going to put that in the for sure. Uh, now we'll be doing our closing help prayer. So if you guys can, please bow your head and close your eyes. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you. We worship you. Father God, you are holy. You are worthy. And you are mighty God. I thank you so much for this conversation that I've had with Zayma today, Father God. We were talking about why trusting you during the time. Why, why is it hard to trust you during our time of why, God, Father God? And just giving advice and giving our different perspective, God. We pray that this video would be a blessing unto others, Father God. And we pray that we remember to surrender, to give up, surrender, and then put your trust in God. Just let you take over, Father God. And instead of us worrying and us just um, stressing out, let's just put everything 
onto you, Father God. Because, Father God, you ask us to put everything onto you, Father God. And we pray that anybody that's going through their ride right now and they're questioning on whether they should trust you or not, Father God, I pray that they'll surrender onto you, Father God. We pray that they'll put their trust in you, Father God. No matter how hard it is, no matter how the devil is trying to come at them, Father God, we pray that they'll put their trust in you, Father God. And we pray that each and every single day, God, we continue to work and build a close relationship in you, Father God, um, to go into your word, Father God, to sing songs onto your name, Father God, to do our um, Bible studies and just everything that we got to do in order to gain a closer relationship with you, Father God. Father God, you did not set life to be easy, Father God, but did, but you did not set it, set it for us to do it alone, Father God. So we thank you, Father God. We pray that you continue to be with us each and every single day, God. In Jesus' name, amen. This was the end of the video, guys. Thank you so much, Miss Evangel Baptiste, for coming back on another episode of the podcast. Guys, don't forget to go to the Triple E channel and show them some love. Subscribe watch the videos hit a like just make sure you check them out um check them out in their instagram um i will have all of that link below make sure you guys check them out and tell them that you're from the mfyc family make sure you tell them you're from over here we sending them all love thank you so much for being a part of the video if you guys haven't already like the video if you're new subscribe please turn on your post notification that way anytime i upload youtube will send your notification this is motivation for young christian i'll see you guys in the next video Bye. What's what's the slogan again, Isema? Oh, my name is Isema Baptiste, and I approve this message. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was expecting you for I was expecting you to say the give up surrender. I, I was I was expecting that, but we're gonna use that for the snippet. Um, this is it for the video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much. If you haven't already, like the video. Subscribe if you're new. Please turn on your post notification. That way, anytime I upload a video, YouTube will send your notification. This is Motivation for Young Christian. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. <laughs>